Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Splunk.conf19. Brought to you by Splunk. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is day three live CUBE coverage here in Las Vegas for Splunks.conf. It's 10 years anniversary of their big customer event. I'm John Furrier with the CUBE. This is our seventh year covering, riding the wave with Splunk from scrappy startup to going public company, massive growth, now a market leader continuing to innovate. We're here with the CEO, Doug Merritt of Splunk. Thanks for joining me, good to see you. Thank you for being here, thanks for having me. How you feeling? Uh, <laughs> it, exhausted and energized simultaneously. <laughs> you know, it was every, a fun week. Every year, you know, when we have have um, the event, we discuss Splunk's success and the loyalty of the customer base, the innovation you guys are providing, the value. You got a lot of happy customers and you got a great ecosystem and partner network growing. You're now growing even further. Every year it just gets better. This year has been a lot of big highlights. New branding, so you got that next level thing going on. New platform, yep. tweaks, bringing this cohesive thing. What's your highlights this year? I mean, what's the big, there's so much going on. What's your highlights? So what you, where you started is always my highlight of the show, is being able to spend time with customers. I've never been at a company where I feel so fortunate to have the passion and the dedication and the enthusiasm and the gratitude of customers as we have here. Um, and so that, I tell everyone at Splunk, like this is uh, similar to a holiday function for a kid, for, for me, where it, the energy keeps me going all year long. Um, so that always is number one, and then around the customers, what we've been doing with uh, the technology architecture, the platform, and the depth and breadth of, um, of what we've been working on, honestly, for four plus years. Uh, it, it really, I think, has come together in a unique way at the show. Um, Last year, you had a lot of announcements that were in, intentional announcements, like it's coming. They're coming now, they're here. They're, they're here. shipping. They're here. What are some of the feedback uh, you're hearing? Because a lot of it has a theme where, you know, we kind of pointed this out a couple years ago, it's like a security show now. But it's not a security show, but there's a lot of security in there. What are some of the key things that have come out of the oven that people should know about that we're launched, that are being delivered here? So the, the um, core of what we're trying to communicate with data to everything is that uh, you need a very multifaceted data platform to be able to handle the huge variety of data that we're all dealing with. Um, and Splunk has been known and been very successful at being able to index data, messy, non-structured data, and make make sense of it even though it's not structured in the index, and that's been, it still is incredibly valuable. But we started almost four years ago on a journey of adding in stream processing before the data gets anywhere to our index or anywhere else, it's moving all around the world, how do you actually find that data and then begin to take advantage of it in flight? And we announced that the beta of data stream processor last, week, last year, but it went production this year, four years of development, uh, a ton of patents, a four 40 plus person, 50 plus person development team behind that. A lot of hard engineering um, and really elegant interface to get that there. And then on the other end to complement the index, data is landing all over the place, not just in our index, and we are very aware that different structures exist for different needs. Um, a data warehouse has different properties in a relational database, which has different properties than a NoSQL column store and memory database, and data is going to only continue to be more dispersed. Um, so so again, four plus years ago, we started on what now is Data Fabric Search, which we pre-announced in beta format last year. That went production at this show, but um, the ability to address a distributed Splunk landscape, but more importantly, we demoed the an integration with HDFS and S3 landscapes as the proof point of we've built a connector framework so that this really cannot just be a incredibly high speed, high cardinality search processing engine, but it really is a federated search engine as well. So now we can operate on data in the stream when it's in motion. We obviously still have all the great properties of the Splunk Index, and I was really excited about Splunk 8.0 and all the features in that. And we can go get data wherever it lives across a distributed Splunk environment, but increasingly across the more and more distributed data environment. This is a, this is a data platform. This, this is, is data absolutely platform. a data platform, so that's very clear. So the success of platforms in the enterprise, at least, not just small, medium-sized business, which you can have a tool and kind of look like a platform. There's some apps out there that I would point to and say, hey, that looks like a tool that's really not a platform. You guys are a platform. But the success of a platform are two things. 
ecosystem yep. and apps. Yep. Because if you're in a platform that's enabling value, you got to have those. Talk about how you see the ecosystem success and the app success. Is Absolutely. that happening in your view? It, it is happening. Um, we have over 2,000 apps on our Splunk base framework, which is where any of our customers can go and download uh, the application to help draw value of a Palo Alto firewall or uh, ensure integration with a ServiceNow trouble ticketing system and thousands of other examples that exist. Um, and that has grown from less than 300 uh, apps when I got here five and six years ago to over 2,000 today. But that is still the earliest yeah. inning, for earliest pitch and the earliest inning journey. Why aren't there 20,000, 200,000, two million apps out there? Um, a piece of it is we have had to up the game on how you interface with the platform. And for us that means through a stable set of services, well-mannered, well-articulated, consistently maintained services. And that's been a huge push with the core Splunk index, but it's also a big uh, uh, amount of work that we've been doing on everything from the separation between phantom runbooks and playbooks with the underlying orchestration automation. It's a key component of our stream yeah. processor. Yeah. You know, what transformations are you doing? What enrichments are you doing? Yeah. That has to live separate than the underlying technology, the Ka Kafka transport mechanism or, uh, or Kinesis or what happens in the future. Um, so that investment to make sure we got an effective and stable set of services has been key, but then you complement that with the amazing set of partners that are out here and making yeah. sure they're educated and enabled on how to take advantage of the platform and then feather in things like the Splunk Ventures announcement yeah. of the Innovation Fund and the Social Impact Fund to further double down on, hey, we are here to help in every way. We're going to help with enablement, we're going to help with sell through and marketing, and we're get, we'll help with investment. Yeah, I think this is smart, and I think one of the things I'll point out is that feedback we heard from customers and uh, conversations we had here in the Cube in the hallway is, there's a lot of great feedback on the automation and the machine learning toolkit, which is a good tell sign of the engagement level of how they're dealing with data. And this kind of speaks to data as a value. Um, the value creation from data seems to be the theme. Yes. It's not just data for data's sake. I mean, managing data is all hard stuff, but value from the data. You mentioned the ventures. You've got a lot of tech for good stuff going on. You're investing in companies where they're standing up data-driven companies to solve world problems. You've got other yep. things. So you guys are adjusting. Late in the middle innings of the data game, platform update, Business model changes. Talk about some of the consumption changes. You got, you got Splunk Cloud. What's going on? on uh, how you charge? How are customers consuming? What moves did you guys make there? And what's the result? Yep, um, it's a great intro on uh, data is awesome, but we all have data to get to decisions first and action second. Without an action, there is no point in, in gathering data. And so many companies have been working their tails off to digitize their landscapes. Why? Well, you want a more flexible landscape, but why the flexibility because there's so much data being generated that if you can get effective decisions and then actions, that landscape can adapt very, very rapidly. Which goes back to machine learning and eventual AI type, type opportunity set. Um, so that is absolutely squarely where we've been focused is translating that data into value and into actual outcomes, which is why our orchestration automation piece is so, uh, so important. One of the gating factors that we felt has existed is for the Splunk Index, and it's only for the Splunk Index, um, the uh, pricing mechanism has been data volume. And that's a little bit contrary to the promise, which is you don't know where the value is going to be within data. Yeah. And whether it's a gigabyte or whether it's a petabyte, why shouldn't you be able to put whatever data you want in to experiment? Um, and so we came out with some updates in pricing a month and change ago that we were reiterating at the show and will continue to drive on a hopefully very aggressive and clear marketing and communications framework um, that for people that have adjusted to the data volume metric, we're trying to make that much simpler. There's now a limited set of bands or tiers from 100 gigs to unlimited so that you really get visibility on, all right, uh, I think that I want to play with five terabytes. I know what that band looks like and it's very liberal so that if you wind up with six and a half terabytes, you won't be penalized. Um, and then there's a complementary metric which I think is ultimately going to be the more long-lived metric for our infrastructurally bound products which is uh, virtual CPU or virtual core. And when I think about our index, 
Matrix, stream processing, federated search, the execution of automation, all those are basically a factor of how much uh, infrastructure you're going to throw at the problem, yeah. whether it's CPU or whether it's storage or network. Um, so I, I can see a day yeah. when Splunk Enterprise, the index, and everything else at that lower level or at that infrastructure layer are all just a series of virtual CPUs or virtual cores. Um, yeah, but I think both yeah. that we're, we're offering choice. We really are customer centric, and whether you want a more liberal data volume or whether you want to switch to an infrastructure, we're there, and, and our job is to help you understand the value translation yeah. on both of those, because it all, all that matters is turning it into action and yeah. into doing. It's interesting, in the news yesterday, uh, quantum supremacy was announced, Google claims that IBM's debating it, but quantum computing just points to the trend that more compute's coming. Yeah. So this is going to be a good thing for data. Yeah. You mentioned the pricing thing. This brings up a topic we've been hearing all week on theCUBE is diverse data is actually great for machine learning, great for AI. So bringing in diverse data gives you more aperture into data, and that yep. actually helps. Yep. With the diversity comes the confusion. This is where the pricing seems to hit. You're trying to create, if I get this right, pricing that matches the needs of the diverse use of data. Is that kind of how you guys yeah, are thinking about it? Uh, meets the needs of diverse data and also is, it provides a lot of clarity for people on when you get to a certain threshold, like we'll, we stop charging all together. Like once you get above uh, yeah, tens of terabytes, 100 terabytes, just put as much data in as you want. Um, the foundation of Splunk, going back to diverse data, is we're the only technology that still exists on the index side that takes raw, non-formatted data, doesn't force you to cleanse or scrub it in any way, and then takes all that raw data and actually provides value through the way that we interact with the data uh, through our, with our query language. And that design architecture, I've said it for five, six years now, is completely unique in the industry. Everybody else things so you've got to get to the data that you want to operate on and then put it somewhere. And the way that life works is much more organic and emergent. You've got chaos happening and then how do you find yeah. patterns and value out of that chaos? Well that chaos winds up being pretty voluminous. Yeah. So how do we help um, organizations, like some of the leading organizations are at five to 10 petabytes of data per day going through the index. How do we help everybody get there? Because you don't know the nugget across that petabyte or 10 10 petabyte set is going to be the key to solving a critical issue. So let's make it easy for you to put that data in to find the, those nuggets, but then once you know what the pattern is, now you're in a different world. Now you're in the structured data world of metrics or KPIs or events or multi-dimensional data that is much more curated, and by nature that's going to be more fine-grained. There's not as much volume yeah. there as there is in the raw data. Doug, I notice also at the event here is a focus on verticals. Can you comment on the strategy there? Is that by design? Is there a vertical? Focus, Definitely by design. Share some insight into that. So we uh, launched with an IT operations focus. We wound up uh, progressing over the years to a security operations focus, and then are doubling down with Omniscient, Signal FX, Victor Ops, and now Streamlio is a new acquisition on the, the DevOps and Next Gen, app, Next Gen App Dev buying centers. As a company in how we go to market and what we are doing with our own solutions, we stay incredibly focused on those three very technical buying centers, but we've also seen that data is data. So the data you're bringing in to serve, solve a security problem can be used to solve a manufacturing problem, or a logistics and supply chain problem, or a customer sentiment analysis problem, and so how do you make use of that data across those different buying centers? Um, we set up a verticals group to seed, continue to seed, the opportunity within those different verticals. And that's compatible with a horizontally scalable Splunk Absolutely. platform. That's kind of why that exists, right? That the overall platform that um, was in every keynote, starting with mine, is completely agnostic and horizontal. The solutions on top, the security operations, IT ops, and DevOps, are very specific to those users, but they're using the horizontal platform. And then you wind up walking into the Accenture booth and seeing how they've taken similar data that the SecOps teams gathered to actually provide insight on effective rail transport for DB Cargo, or effective cell tower triangulation and capacity for a major Australian uh, cell company. Um, or effective manufacturing and logistics supply chain optimization um, for uh, manufacturer and all their different retail distribution awesome. centers. Awesome. You know, I know I've, uh, you've talked with Jeff Frick and Pass and Stu and Dave, uh, Stu Miniman and Dave Vellante about user experience. I know that's something that's yes. near and dear to your heart. You guys, uh, has been rumored that's going to be some user experience work done on the onboarding uh, for your Splunk cloud and making it easier to get in. Yes. Which is this, this new Splunk platform. What's, what, what can we expect on the user experience side? Um, so. <laughs> 
for <laughs> any, any of you out there that want to try, we've got uh, Splunk Investigate as one of the first applications on top of the fully decomposed services layered stateless Splunk Cloud. Um, Mission Control actually is a complementary other, for, those are the first two apps on top of that new framework. Um, and the, the UI and experience that is in Splunk Investigate, I think is a good example of both the ease of, of coming to and using the product. Um, there's a very liberal amount of data you get for free just to experiment with Splunk Investigate. But then the onboarding experience of data is, I think, very elegant. Um, the UI is, I, I love the UI, it's a Jupyter style workbook type interface, but if you think about what do investigators need, investigators need um, both some breadcrumbs on wh where to start and how to end, but then they also need the ability to bring in anybody that's necessary um, so that you can actually swarm and attack a problem very efficiently. And so when you go back and look at, why do we buy VictorOps? Well, it wasn't because we think that the IT alerting space is a massive space we're going to own. It's because collaboration yeah. is incredibly important to swarm incidents of any type, whether they're security incidents or manufacturing incidents. So the facilities that VictorOps gave on allowing distributed teams and virtual teams to very quickly get to resolution, you're going to find those baked into all products like Mission Control, because um, it's one of the key facilities of, that Tim talked about in his keynote of indulgent design, mobility, high collaboration, because yeah. luckily people still matter, and while ML is helping all of us be more productive, it isn't taking away the need for us, but yeah. how do you get us to cooperate effectively? And so our cloud-based apps, I encourage any of you out there, go try Splunk Investigate, it's a beautiful product, and I think you'll be blown away by it. Great success on the product side, and great success on the customer side, you got great loyal customers. But I got to ask you about the next level Splunk. As you look at this event, uh, what jumps out at me is the cohesiveness of the story on the platform and the apps, uh, ecosystem's great, but the new branding data to everything. It's not product specific, because you have product leadership. Right. This is a whole next level Splunk. What is the next level Splunk vision? And I love the pink, the pink and orange, in bold colors. Um, so when, I, when I've thought about what are the issues that are some of the, the, the blockers to Splunk eventually fulfilling uh, it, the destiny that we could have. Um, what the number one is awareness. Like, who the heck is Splunk? Um, people have a very a high varied variance of, of their understanding of Splunk. Um, log, aggregation, security tool, IT tool. And what we've seen over and over is it is much more of this data platform and certainly with the announcements, it's becoming more of this data fabric or platform that can be used for anything. Um, so how do we bring awareness to Splunk? Well, let's come out, uh, help create a category and it's not up to us to create the category, it's up to all of you to create the category. Um, but data everything in our minds represents the power of data. Um, and while we will continue internally to focus on those technical buying centers, everything is solvable with data. Um, so we're trying to really reinforce the importance of data and the capabilities that something like Splunk brings. Cloud becomes a really important message to that because that makes it, um, ex execution to that, because it makes it so much easier for people to immediately try something and get value you, but on-prem will always be important as well, because data has gravity, data has risk, data has cost to move, and it, there are so many use cases where you just never push data to the cloud. Um, yeah. And it's not because we don't love cloud. If you have a, a factory that's producing 100 terabytes an hour in a area where you've got poor bandwidth, like there's no option yeah. for a cloud connect there of, of high scale, so you better be able to process, make sense of, and act on that data locally. And you guys are great with the cloud too on-premise, but finally, Final word, I want to get your thoughts to end the segment. I know you got to run. Thanks for your time. Congratulations on all your success. Um, data for good. There's a lot of um, tech for bad kind of narratives going on, um, but there's a real resurgence of tech for good. A lot of people, entrepreneurs for profit or nonprofit, are doing ventures for good. Data is a real theme. Data for good is something that you have. That's part of the data to everything. Um, talk about the data for good real quick. Yeah, we were really excited about what we've done with uh, Splunk for Good as our uh, nonprofit focused uh, entity. The Splunk Pledge, which is a classic one 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 approach to make sure that we're able to help uh, organizations that, that need the help do something meaningful within their, their world. And then the uh, Splunk Social Impact Fund,
fund, which is trying to put our money where our mouth is to um, ensure that if a funding and scarcity of funds is an issue of getting to effective outcomes that, um, that we can be there to support. Um, at this show, we featured three awesome charities, uh, Conservation International, Net Hope, and the Global Emancipation Network that are all trying to tackle really thorny problems with different dementia, or, you know, different in different ways, different problems in different ways, um, but data winds up being at the heart of one, one of the ways to unlock what they're trying to get done. Um, we're really excited and proud that we're able to actually uh, make meaningful donations to all three of those, but it is a constant theme within Splunk, and I think something that all of us from the tech community and non-tech community are going to have to help evangelize is there, with every invention and with everything that occurs in the world, there's the power to take it and make uh, less noble uh, execution of it. You know, there's always potential harmful activities, and then there's the power to actually drive good. And data is one of those. Awesome. Get, data can be used as a weapon and can be used negatively, but it also needs to be liberated so that it can be used positively. While we're all con concerned about our own privacy and really really, really personal data, we're not going to get to the type of healthcare and genetic uh, massive shifts and changes and benefits without having a way to begin to share some of this data. Yeah. So putting controls around data is going to be important, putting people in the middle of the process to decide what happens to their data, and some consequences around misuse of data is going to be important, but continuing to keep a mindset of all good happens as we become more liberal, you know, globalization is good, yeah. you know, free all flow is good. Valleys in the data. Free flow of people, free flow of data ultimately is very good. Doug, thank you so much for spending the time to come on theCUBE. And again, congratulations on a great culture. Also, worth noting, just give you a plug here because it's, I think, very valuable. One of the best places to work for women in tech. You guys recently got some recognition on that. That is a huge accomplishment. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We had a great diversity track here, which is really important awesome. as well. But Doug, we love partnering with you guys. Thank you for spending the entire week with us and yeah. for helping to continue to uh, evangelize and help people understand what the power yeah. of technology and yeah. data can do for them. Hey, video is data, and we're bringing that Absolutely data to is. you here on theCUBE, and of course, the Cube Cloud coming soon. I'm John Furrier here live at Splunk.com with Doug Merritt, the CEO. We'll be back with more coverage after this short break.